want to start with a little um, quote or a little statement um, this afternoon. And it is, well-being is not simply an absence of stress or adverse events. Living well requires the capacity to grow and learn and to find ways to live a meaningful life regardless of your circumstances. A big hello to everyone and welcome to our talk show, which I would tag as a talk therapy today and our continuing live sessions that we have sponsored by Youth Jobs Fiji. Okay, so these are our continuing webinar series that we are going to run um, probably in uh, two weeks time from every webinar. And today's webinar, how we came up with this topic is the founder, Shanil Shetty, he ran a poll uh, on the Viber group or other, other social channels that we have on what are some of the topics that you wanted to brush on or some of the topics that you wanted to learn. And a lot of people had agreed, our members had agreed that, you know, stress and anxiety is something which is hitting them quite hard at this moment. And fair enough, we all are enduring some level of stress and anxiety given the um, landscape um, of the pandemic. Now, Youth Fiji, what we aim to do is we bring out some resources, a lot of resources where it enables you to channel through um, recruiters or to also provide some coaching and mentoring um, initiatives around preparing you for interviews, um, making sure that your CVs are up to par level, your application letters are up to par level and, and many other uh, such support uh, mechanisms are put into place by Youth Fiji which is um, a voluntary group in nature. We are proud to say that today we have over 4,000 members and we thank you for being our member. One thing that I would like you to know that we do not have any hidden agenda. We are free in, the, um, in our operation. There is no hidden cost and we do not even allow others to use us as a, a platform to maximize either on their marketing or their businesses. So we are here purely to help you to be the best version of you. So now what has happened, what is happening is um, because we are preparing you for the job market, as you all are aware that our, um, uh, you know, our rates have um, been quite promising about the jabs that people are getting into, which is a great thing. And then this is going to allow the country to open up for businesses. And now when that happens, it will allow more opportunities for you to start vouching for some jobs out there. So apart from only preparing preparing you for your job interviews, both face-to-face -face or virtual, we are also bringing in such topics such as being aware of your mental health and how you can cope up so you can be a better version of you. Okay, before we hit into the core part of this virtual session, there is few housekeeping rules um, that I would like you to be aware of. Um, the administrators are going to put everybody's um, uh, microphones on mute so that there is no disturbance through the presentations that we are going to have. However, towards the end of the session, we will allow you to um, have your questions and then, or the, um, and then they will be answered by our two guest speakers who we are very happy to bring on board this afternoon. And before I miss saying it to you, a very happy Father's Day to your dads and also if you are a dad attending this seminar today and, you know, 
well, we we wish you all the best and we hope that this seminar that we are going to have is going to be very resourceful for you so um other stuff that i want to let you know for those who stay back and finish the whole webinar you will be provided with a completion and a participation certificate which will be endorsed by our two um speakers today and um guess what we are bringing in something exciting this time we are going to have some prize giveaways so we are going to run it at two intervals one towards the middle of the session and one towards the end of the session and the questions that we are going to ask you is purely going to be based from what our speakers are going to talk to you about how exciting how interesting so stay tuned with us and and let's see if you are able to grab this takeaways. Okay, now please allow me to introduce to you um, our webinar series and our guest speakers. Today's session, first we are going to have um, Mr. Chone, followed by Dr. Maria, and then a question and answer session. Now I am going to introduce to you our speakers for this afternoon. Our first speaker is Mr. Chone by Sama Sama. Chone comes with a broad knowledge and experience with a very strong therapeutic intervention background. He serves as a counsellor with the University of Fiji and has been also a facilitator with counselling programmes with University of the South Pacific TAFE programmes. He has extensive qualifications and trainings in the field of psychology and has acquired a Bachelor of Arts degree majoring in politics and psychology followed by a postgraduate diploma in psychology. He has been diligently a part of the Fiji Higher Education Commission's Committee Industry Standard Advisory for the establishment of national qualifications for the counseling frameworks in Fiji. Chone, is a full member of the Fiji Psychological Society and he does a lot of guest speaking, motivational support, coaching and mentoring, reaching out to various diverse communities around Fiji. He is very passionate about people, I'm, I'm sorry, I had um, um, dropped out. So Chone loves what he does, especially in the area of um, advocating on well-being and mental health and awareness. Chone hails from the beautiful jet town, Nandi. And we welcome Chone, but we, I will introduce the next speaker, then we will have Chone to start proper with the session. Thank you. Now, please allow me to introduce Dr. Maria Caballo, beautiful name. Dr. Maria is currently a senior lecturer at the University of Fiji, um, UPSM. She is a very highly qualified psychiatrist in Fiji. She is a licensed medical technologist and medical doctor with a four-year training through a psychiatry specialist program. She is a graduate of a consultant liaison um, psychiatry fellowship with masters in public health management. Before she came to Fiji, 
Dr. Maria has been a medical specialist for one of the largest psychiatry hospitals in Asia with more than 3,000 bed capacity. Dr. Maria has been very instrumental in sharing her experience and knowledge in Fiji and working around frames of mental health and well-being. Ladies and gentlemen, and our virtual listeners, once again, welcome, and I will hand over the floor to Chone, who is our first speaker. Chone, the world is yours. Vinaka Vaka Levu. Thank you. Thank you, Altab. Uh, thank you for the very spirited introduction. Uh, I'll just try and share my screen now, if possible. Mm. Right. Uh, is it? Uh, can you see this? Is it? Uh, do you see all this? Yes. Right. Right. So, uh, just before I begin, uh, we are just uh, a point of information. Uh, we are also trying to circulate uh, a, a survey through this platform as well. It's a basic uh, twenty-one question survey. It's just to be just to get us uh, some data on the level of stress that you are experiencing during this COVID-19 pandemic. And uh, if you do consent, please, it would be really vital for future researchers uh, in uh, mental health, especially with not just the university, but uh, for the country as a whole. So if you do consent, please do take out the time to fill uh, this uh, questionnaire and uh, also to also leave your information as well so we could uh, work on something together. Now, uh, to begin with today, uh, I just like to say Dr. Maria, our, our senior lecturer and I, uh, we are really honored today to be part of uh, this experience and to be given the opportunity to be able to share on uh, something that uh, we believe has been really affecting a lot of youths uh, today, especially during this COVID-19 pandemic. So uh, once again, thank you for allowing us to be here. Now to go further into the presentation, uh, my presentation, we will have a combination like how uh, Altap had mentioned earlier. I will just uh, brush up on a few things. Uh, and these few things include the uh, impact of COVID-19 and on well-being, uh, understanding coping, and then Dr. Maria will go into uh, parts of the teen brain, explaining certain things about uh, trying to understand how to cope during this time. And lastly, we'll be sort of delving into your job as youth, eh? how important your the impact of being a youth in is uh, being a youth in the fight for mental health eh? in this uh, constant fight that we are having right now. Eh? Now, just a basic overview. If you look right now, you know, COVID-19 has really impacted a lot of lives eh? in terms of uh, how people are able to provide for their families, how you know, people are not really being able to have jobs anymore. There's a lot of causes of stress that COVID-19, this pandemic has brought about. Eh? And just the pandemic itself, you know, this that is just only one aspect of how it affects your mental health. There's so many other aspects. There's the fear of contracting, you know, these. Uh, so in a way, COVID-19 has sort of become like a pressure cooker. Eh? There's, there's, uh, there's, uh, it's, it's sort of like made uh, communities a hotbed for, for mental health issues because there's so many things that are straining. Finances are straining. Uh, family life is straining. Your relationships between your partners and your children, you know, all these things, they all do take a toll on your mental health. Eh? And in that uh, same aspect, one key part of communities that has been affected is the youths. Eh? There's a lot of youths out there that feel that there is uh, there's no answers anymore you know there's a uh, there's a lack of direction they're not even sure where to go to from this point eh? there's they feel like all the pathways that were there and were made available before it has been cut from them because you know there's a lot of uh, uh, the opportunities that would have been available to them before has been cut because of this covid-19 pandemic if you if you see across uh, the teenage spectrum there's a lot of students that 
Uh, and I remember um, Shanil had told me before before the session that there was some students that that felt that uh, they, they felt this sort of anxiety and this fear going into this uh, this uh, external exam period. Eh? Now, all of these things, these are all just some of the strains of what this COVID pandemic has done to us as youths and to the whole community at a wider range. Eh? Now, in saying that, it's important to understand that while these things are happening, they has there needs to be also a focus on coping skills, eh? coping strategies. Like uh, it's uh, sometimes when you think of the word coping, you just you you immediately assume that it's something just to get you through that difficult period. Eh? But it's important to also understand that in terms of mental health, there is some coping that is good and there is some coping that is not good for you, right? So uh, it's uh, in uh, mental health terms, it's called adaptive and maladaptive. So it's important to try and distinguish between the two as well, whether something that you're doing to get you through that tough time, if it's, if it's uh, helping you become productive, if it's helping you moving forward, or is it restricting your progress and is it uh, diminishing your abilities as a person? Eh? Now, in terms of understanding that as a whole, you also need to understand that practicing positive coping strategies is very important in terms of trying to get through this whole thing. Eh? If you've noticed uh, the communities as a whole, there's, there's so much uh, there's so much pent up anger, eh? there's so much pent up stress, and and there's uh, so much fear and anxiety, and, and uh, we can we can overcome that by just practicing positive coping skills and being supportive to each other. Eh? And now we will further elaborate uh, on that uh, as we go on. Eh? Now, just to understand the impact of this COVID-19 and on your lives as youths, you can see it uh, just being broken down by this basic scale here. Now, the uh, different aspects that contribute to that heightened level uh, of Johnny, diet. Right. Hello? I think uh, your slides are not showing. Um, oh. It may be stuck at one position. Uh, maybe you can try um, presenting again. Okay. Uh, give a second. Did it? Did it stop? I uh, know it was stuck at the beginning. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, just, do I share screen again? Uh, hold up. Let me just uh, try from my end, and you can most probably just uh, take control. Let's see. Okay. Right. Uh, do I take control now? Right. I apologize for that. So sorry. Uh, this is just <laughs> being new to this. Huh? Can you see now? Yes, we can see now. Okay, okay. So I have to click on it. All right. So apologies to the the, the participants right now. I really apologize for that. Uh, right now, like as I was saying, if you can see the impact on your psychological health, you would see that there's all these different points and underlying issues which contribute to the higher level of anxiety, the higher level of depression, and this higher level of just negative feelings that, that is associated with this COVID-19 pandemic. One, you can see that sometime during this uh, time that we are all in isolation, really we, as as humans, we're not really supposed to stay you know, by ourselves, confined to the four walls of a room, and not being able to communicate and you know that that in itself it's uh, it's something that's a very new experience and it can contribute to you know uh, uh, having some sort of uh, issues with your mental health eh? there's the the fear of contracting the outbreak you know there was if you look across society and if you look across your community as well you know there's uh, there's a there's a heightened sense of fear just to be able to move outside your house you know just to be able to do the things that we used to do before, now it's at such a high level of risk, and that in itself is such, uh, it takes a strain on your mental health as well. And then cu cu that coupled with uh, the things that you see on TV, media news, you know, you're constantly being exposed to this information. And then on top of that, 
is the the very you know the, the heightened issue of not being able to provide for your family right now in nandi in places in suva all across the country a lot of people have lost their jobs a lot of families have lost the ability to be able to provide food on the table there's a lot of families that aren't able to seek the opportunities and the resources that they used to have before and this in itself you know it causes a lot of stress within families eh? it causes a lot of stress within couples and it causes a lot of stress from uh far from parents to the kids you know and it, it, this it's all seem to be building up in any term and just to use the same terminology i used before he, you know it's sort of become like a hotbed eh? now just uh, and another thing that has also contributed as well is social media and now youths we if you are if we're being really honest with ourselves we are we tend to use social media a lot just to be able to access news and to be able to understand the current affairs of everything that's happening around you to see what's going on in your community now that in itself it is good it's a good way to be able to stay connected eh? but as soon as the covid-19 pandemic happened there was also uh there was also issues with misinformation eh? misinformation being exposed to the wrong types of information that isn't really good for your mental health you know being seeing all these uh, these uh these videos these graphic videos of things being put online and uh, uh being exposed to to all these uh vulgar and graphic uh, materials that you know is, isn't really helping you in being able to cope with uh, this pandemic and to be able to cope with your mental uh, your mental health as a youth eh? now uh this uh like this invite a number of overwhelming burdens eh, in forms of anxiety it heightens phobias it heightens your panic your your your, your expressions of panic and depression obsession no and and it's also made it harder for healthcare providers as well to be able to do the work that they do eh? and so it's important to realize that you know you have to distinguish between what is misinformation and what isn't eh? now just to look at some of the mental uh, effects of uh, what has happened now now with this covid-19 pandemic and uh, in your in your existence as a youth now some of the effects you can see that right now there's a there's a lot of irritability with people eh? they, these very small things start to trigger them you know it's before issues that weren't really issues before start to become bigger issues now and it's coupled with staying at home all the time being exposed to certain uh, the same types of people then small issues start to become big issues and you know these are all uh, some of the effects eh? there's the fear of contracting you know spreading the infection to your family members especially if you have someone who has a pre-existing illness at home so as youths you know you feel like okay i shouldn't be able to i can't move around that much because if i do my family is at risk you know so there there's anger confusion there's frustration there's loneliness and denial you know all these things they're coupled with with uh, your existence as a youth and and its relation to this covid-19 pandemic yeah? now as a youth you'd start to see that when what covid what this whole covid pandemic uh, how it how it affects your mental health you'll start to see that you you'll, you'll experience more feelings of loneliness eh? and sadness you're being confined to a certain space your it will increase your uncertainty because all these like i mentioned before all these uh, opportunities were taken away from you resources were taken away from you uh your ability to study to the best of your ability it's not there anymore so you start to see changes in your sleeping patterns changes in uh, in how you how you exhibit anger and how you exhibit frustration so then you start to rely more on substances so all these things they they take a toll on you because you know your young mind is not being able to comprehend the new change in environment and the new change in circumstances that you're going through eh? now now just to uh, talk a bit about coping now coping like i mentioned before coping is just 
coping is a way for you to be able to manage or uh, manage or overcome uncomfortable situations, eh? the ways in which we respond to life's demands. Eh? Now, you can think of some ways of or some examples of coping. Uh, you know, sometimes people, they like going for runs. Sometimes people, they like reading a book. But then on the other side, in the other side of that argument is people that, you know, they resort to smoking, they res resort to cover consumption, they resort to drinking, they resort to all these different things. Eh? And then that's where you separate the difference between what's good coping and what's bad coping, right? Adaptive coping is something that if you practice, it helps you overcome the situation that you're in in a positive way. Yeah? It helps you grow, helps you learn some new skill, it helps you feel better in the end as compared to a maladaptive coping or bad coping where you can binge drink or you can try a, a substance abuse and you can do all these things and then it doesn't really solve the issue in the end. It doesn't help you overcome these things emotionally. Yeah? Now, some of the consequences of not coping effectively, you, you don't really solve the issue. Yeah? There's the underlying issues that are causing your problems, you're not addressing it. You're not addressing it in a healthy way. You are just seeing that it is there and then reverting back to that unhealthy coping strategy. Yeah? And then in the end, you're just leaving that stress to prolong itself. And it's very important to understand that Stress prolonged is stress enlarged, yeah? Stress prolonged is stress enlarged. If you leave something for too long, it gets worse, yeah? Now, there's a short term, you, you view things as like the short term grat gratification. When you uh, do that, that, that negative coping strategy, you feel good in that particular time. But then after that, you know, that, that good feeling, it doesn't stay for too long because you're not identifying and addressing the issue, eh, which is at hand. Eh? And then it actually worsens the initial symptoms. Eh? So uh, it's important to notice some of the signs of stress. And I feel like I've uh, mentioned it before. Sometimes you're irritable, you're aggressive. But it's also important to understand that when the issues and how you react now, how you react to you know all these things now? How you how you take and how you how you exhibit anger? How you exhibit exhaustion? How you exhibit uh, a frustration? You know these are not just uh, just uh, the result of just one particular thing. Eh? This is a result of all the things around you. Yeah? There's all the things around you, the relationships you have, the environment that you're in the the connections that you make every day and it's explained by just this uh this biopsychosocial framework okay the biopsychosocial framework is just a fancy way of saying that you are a person you know you have your biological structure there's things about you your personality traits and then there's the outside the people that are around you they affect your mood too you know they affect your mood too and then your own ability to understand these emotions that affects your mood as well, right? So it's important to be able to be self-aware, right? to be self-aware of all the things that is around you, to identify that, okay, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm putting myself in these environments and it's not helping me, so I need to address that. I need to uh, either push myself away or, or try to address what's happening yeah? and, and trying to be more self-aware of all the things that that you feel is uh, going to affect your mental health. Eh? Now, uh, I will pass it on now to uh, an expert in uh, the brain and an expert in the teen brain, who will go on to, ex to explain more about uh, uh, teen uh, youth uh, connection to mental health. Now, Dr. Maria, if uh, she's online, she will, take, uh, she will take the next part of this presentation. Uh, thank you, Dr. Maria.
Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, first and foremost, thank you for uh, the organizers uh, for inviting us. Uh, John and I have been very passionate about uh, sharing uh, the tips or sharing what we have or what we know about mental health. Um, going, let's uh, um, not talk for COVID for a few minutes because again, everybody is talking about COVID. And let's go back. I want to go back into because I was told that this is about youth and uh, you know mental health. So understanding the teenage brain. And I hope you can see the slides. Can you see the slides? Yes, madam. Yes, we do. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, so for, for the audience, I hope you can read some of the things that, let's say, is very common when uh, somebody would be introducing a teenage person or teen, uh, a youth. Uh, they would say that youth are either irresponsible, reckless, overdramatic, uh, fashionable. Sometimes they're innovative, but they're selfish. All of the characteristics that would uh, adults before would be saying that the youth or uh, the teenagers are. But for somebody who would be depicting how the brain, artistically depicting how the brain of a teenage person is. Would you agree with me that this is uh, basically how the brain of a youth person or of a young person, the love lobe is definitely bigger. And if you can see the memory for chores and homework, which is down to the bottom, is definitely very small. Okay. And then there's the awkwardness. There's the cool gauge of you're cool enough to be with your classmates or not. And there's the rebellion side. And then there's the creativity clan. Okay. And uh, the answers to the questions they don't know what definitely uh, they are curious about. And then there's communication skills because because of the emotions and because uh, the youth or let's say the brain of the youth are still um, modeling or still being structured. Definitely there are some times where they can't really express themselves. So that's one of the problems. But they say that this is basically the artistic the, uh, artistic depiction of a female teenage girl. So what about the males? They would say that it's more of, especially for the frontal of girls, they suddenly realize that, oh, girls, okay? And they would talk about cars. They would talk about schoolwork, very, very small. If you can see the, the part of the, uh, the artistic depiction of a male teenager's brain. And there's, of course, the ability to to remember all the, they would be remember all of the lyrics of the hip hop songs, etc. But if you ask them about actual history or you ask them about actual homework, then they would forget. Okay, so they this is the this was the normal depiction before of teenagers. But there's an interesting information that I want to share with all of you. The brain development, contrary to previous beliefs, the human brain is still developing during teen years and even into the 20s. There's a second of overproduction of gray matter at this age, after which the brain goes to the uh, pruning period. Teens can control the way that their brains develop. So what does that mean for teenagers? What does that mean for young adults? Well, the frontal, uh, frontal cortex, I will not be talking to you about anatomy, but the frontal cortex, the last to develop. And why is that important? Or why should we uh, uh, look at this as an opportunity? Well, because the frontal cortex is basically for higher order cognition. That's where the problem solving abilities are, the analytical thinking, the intelligence. That's where judgments are. That's why sometimes the old people or the old generation would say, oh, Teenagers, they don't know what they're doing. They don't know the consequences. That's because that particular part of your brain is still developing. So judgment, therefore, is not always on point. So sometimes there's always that yeah, regulation of impulse and emotions, the memory forming ability, logic and calm or verbal communications. All of that is still forming. So what I want to say is the teenage brain has specific changes that happens to them, you know, because of the connections, the emotions, the hormones, the reward system that we have, and of course the risk taking. So for teenagers, if you say, 
if you do all your homework and you get a, gr a grade of A, I'll give you a car. Oh, definitely. They would definitely uh, respond to that because teenage brains are more sensitive to reward. So what happens in a brain of a person during the formative years, the uh, elementary years to the probably high school, it begins, it begins to accumulate all information, left and right, all of the information that they have, it's sprouting, okay? But then when teenage years happen, there's what we call a synaptic pruning. What does that mean? Synaptic pruning means basically the things that for you, for your brain now, because there's, there's a remodeling of the brain, if you feel that that's not important, then it get, gets cut off, the connection between the neurons, which is the brain cells. Basically, for example, if before you knew a little about basketball, you knew a little about soccer, you knew a little about playing the guitar. But for now, as a teenager, you realize that now my passion is just playing the guitar. I don't want to be a football player. I don't want to be basket. So little by little, the communications between neurons, when it comes to you knowing how to do, uh, how to play basketball well, how to play soccer well, etc., they get cut off. It's called pruning. And then, of course, the second thing that happens to a teenage brain, it, it has the myelin, myelination, meaning myelin is basically um, the insular uh, insulation between one neuron and another. And if you have more myelin, that means that the uh, brain impulses or the uh, the intelligence or the neurons from one cell from one neuron to the other, it travels faster. Communication travels faster. So you would have that kind of solid base wherein uh, the things that you actually want to know that you're passionate about, like for example, again, playing the guitar, if you learn it, if you do it over and over again, then that particular connection uh, from your neurons, it gets solidified or it gets uh, stronger, okay? So that's what we call as neuroplasticity. Neuroplasticity basically means the brain's ability to modify, to change and adapt both structure and function to the life and in the response of the experiences. So basically what pruning does to a teenager's brain, if, if the teenager feels that that's not important, that's not uh, a thing that I would want to pursue in my life uh, in the future, it gets cut off. And this is where I want you to understand that you can help yourselves because definitely if you would be doing uh, or if you would be practicing something that you would like passionately, then that would be a, a better way of, for example, remodeling your brain as compared to, for example, if you have bad habits and you continue with those bad habits. So those are the things or those are what the brain would be going uh, uh, learning throughout your teenagers and to your adult life. But if you change it and for example you learn a new language for example then that definitely will be a stronger connection and you'd be able to use that in the future so it's up to you that's what i want you to understand it's up to you to be able to maximize your brain and to be able to maximize your potential as a human being remodeling specializing itself to find your passion is what teenagers brains are doing to find your purpose in life Okay, so there are two types of brain plasticity. Basically, uh, the one is structural plasticity, is plasticity. Basically, experiences or me, uh, memories change as brain's physical structure. So for example, you experience this, uh, oh, I like to be able to cook a very good dinner for my family and I'm happy doing it. So you learn, for example, new recipes, et cetera. And that is again, remodeling the brain and then of course that's brain functions move from one damaged area to another that is where the brain itself would recognize oh this particular human would like this as their important thing uh, or to uh, would have this list of important things that they would want to know and they would want to be experts at so the old the age old the saying of practice makes perfect does apply when it comes to being able to train your brain to what you're passionate about. That means if there's a circumstance, you know, we always have circumstances in our in our lives. If there's a circumstance, it's up to you to be able to 
make that circumstance either as a crisis, which means that you are confused about what decision to make, etc., or to make that circumstance as an opportunity. Okay, it's up to you to act basically be stressed out about it or not, because you have the ability. You have, I'm uh, telling you that you are empowered to actually make, especially for your age, for the youth. You are, you have the power to be able to make good and better or remodel your brain in a better, uh, in a better form or figure. Okay, stress for teenage brain. Definitely, it's either homework, money issues, friends, or being sociable, or being in your social uh, circle. Sometimes sports, expectations are too high, time, social life, pressures, dating, all of those things. Uh, of course, family and, uh, family and parents. These are all circumstance. It's up to you whether you, it will be a crisis for you or whether it will be an opportunity for you because you have the power to do that. Now, I hope um, in doing so, in this realization that we're telling you, you will not succumb to uh, teenage brain or having bad coping because bad coping would definitely lead you to chronic stress, to heart disease, to mental illness, and to addiction, okay? Uh, I hope that we, we you understand that it's up to you and you can do something about it. Tap in your neuroplasticity so that you'd be able to be the best version of you. Now, a lot of things have been said about depression. I would just like you to understand that we do not label somebody that is sad as, oh, definitely clinical depression. Clinical depression is a mental illness and there's certain criteria to say that the person has clinical depression. Not everybody who is sad is depressed clinically, okay? But just to make sure that you would be able to identify from you and from your friends, usually the stress or the, uh, the symptoms would last for more than two weeks. But we have a mnemonic. We say that it's a sad faces. A would mean appetite changes. So it's either increase of appetite and then or decrease of appetite and i'm sure you have heard or if you this is the first time that you're going to be hearing it we have what we call the smooth eaters you know my my boyfriend left me um, and then when you ask the person what did you eat i don't know it's because of my boyfriend he left me okay so all of those things those are appetite changes that can happen to a person who is depressed remember not everybody who has problems with depression or not everybody who have problems with eating is definitely major depressed or clinically depressed, okay? And we go to sad, which is, again, sleepiness. So you have heard a lot about people having insomnia because they have problems in life, etc. But the exact opposite can happen. There are some people who would be hyper-sleeping. They would be sleeping off. They would not have um the the need to wake up and do some activities etc because they're sad okay and then we have anhedonia which is basically loss of pleasure like for example if your uh, if your friends or um if your buddies would say let's go to town let's watch a movie etc before that would give you pleasure that would definitely put you out of your funk but now even if they ask you even if they uh text you, let's go, uh, let's meet meet up, etc. Let's have a drink. You don't find pleasure in that. That is anhedonia. And then the next one is dysphoria. Oh, sorry for the O. There's no should be no O. Dysphoria, with, which basically means you feel um, sad. OK, there's something there's an agitation, sort of an agitation or sort of a, a feeling that something's wrong, something's not. And you feel down about it. And then, of course, there's faces. You have fatigue or low energy. You have agitation or retardation. So uh, this should be clearing it up. Not all depressed patients would be uh, walking slowly or moving slowly. There are patients that, or there are people who have depression that would either be agit that would be more agitated than the than you know retarded uh, moving slowly. So agitation or retardation can also be a sign of depression. And then concentrating, uh, you have diminished concentration or you would lose focus. And then sometimes some depressed people would be guilty. 
Sometimes they don't even know why they're guilty, but there's this low self-esteem that says, oh, I might have done something wrong, or uh, it's because of this, or it's because of that. Again, linking it to the circumstance that happens in your life. And then, of course, there's suicidal thoughts or thoughts of death. And it doesn't necessarily mean, I hope, it doesn't necessarily mean your actual um, committing, for example, harm to your body. But sometimes it's just always thinking about death, always thinking about what if, what if I'm not here? What would my friends do? What will, with my, what will my parents do, etc. So again, these are symptoms of depression. And again, these are just to help you out to be able to identify. But it doesn't mean that you are clinically depressed. There is a criteria that we follow and not all depressed or not all sad people are clinically depressed. So now that we have, we've, you've seen the face of uh, a sad person. My question is, is this person sad? Or is this emoji sad? Based on what we know, okay, so far. Is this emoji sad? Or is this emoji sad? Or maybe this one? Okay. We are often seeing, we often, we see people that are sad or that are, looks lonely or looks down. And then we definitely would interpret them as, oh, they're sad, they're depressed. But what if you see somebody Who's smiling? Of course, you don't. You won't be thinking, ah, that person is sad because she, that person is smiling. But lately, I don't know if it's because of the pandemic or because there's too many problems in this world, in this society. We have seen the phenomenon of smiling depression. And I would like to convey to you that this is definitely something that should be watched out for and you or some of your uh, friends that might have the symptoms, uh, you could help because there is always hope. So who could get smiling depression? Well, basically the people who would have big changes in their lives that happened. And because of this COVID, there are big changes that happen to a lot of people, a lot of families, uh, not just financially, but also the restriction of needing to be inside and not being able to not have the liberty of going out that definitely uh, puts a toll on your psychological freedom cultural judgment and stigma expectations trauma and then there's social media oh that problem of social media do you know that we have now uh, what we call a selfie dysmorphia okay so what does dysmorphia mean basically dysmorphia is a mental disorder that can stop that people can stop thinking about one or more perceived defects or the face or in your appearance and they get so worked up they get so anxious about their appearance and we say so when we say social media there's selfie dysmorphia meaning all of the filters that happen you know you can't get a picture without actually doing something to the to your face or to your uh, picture you either put the lights on lights off have twinkles get your eyes such as uh, bigger, such as uh, that of the anime. So all of those selfie dysmorphia means basically that you feel that the picture that is being shown in social media is better than your actual face. So you will get depressed, you will get anxious, you will go find a plastic surgeon, uh, you will do every probably by 100, 200, 300 uh, amount of makeup just to alter your face, okay? Because you're not satisfied because you feel that, oh, there's something wrong with my eyes. They're not big enough. Or my chin is too big. It's too round. It has to be uh, all of those things. A lot of things can happen. And I would want you to know what are some of the, or uh, in, there's really not the DSM, there's no DSM-5 criteria yet for smiling depression, which would definitely fall under depression with atypical features. So, Smiling depression is a term for a person living with depression on the inside while appearing perfectly happy and contented on the outside, meaning you wouldn't really know. This public life is usually one that is put together or maybe what we would call as, oh, your life is perfect, okay? So sometimes that, oh, your life is perfect, 
is not really that perfect. Okay, some would be active, some would be highly functional, meaning they go to work, they do their jobs, they would talk to people, holding down steady jobs with a healthy family and social life. Okay, and they would appear cheerful, optimistic, and generally happy. And but that's a facade. Why? Because once there's no person, was no, uh, there's no family, there's no friends around, the sadness is there. And they would perceive sadness as weakness. So they would express their feelings and feel that if I would tell somebody about it, if I will tell my friends, I will be a burden to them. So I just won't tell them. Okay. These people, when they're alone, that's when you see that their energy is actually low. When they feel that nobody's watching them, because otherwise they would put on a face, uh, 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 would put up a front and they would be happy. Hi, hello, how are you? I'm very good, I'm happy. But otherwise, once they're alone, that's when depression or the, the features of real depression comes in. So sometimes they would feel, oh, this is me. I'm okay. I'm fine. And they would feel that there are other things in life that are so much worse than them. So why would I complain? Why? Uh, I, have no, I have no right to complain. Okay? So most of them would feel that the world would be better off without me. Or the world will be better off if, for example, I'm ticked out of the uh, equation. It, that's a very important thing to understand, and that is uh, quite alarming for us because smiling depression have, um, let's say, a higher percentage of doing the uh, having the suicidal thoughts because nobody actually knows that they are depressed. So what can you do? Again, because of this. Even if it's not face to face, you still have to get in touch with family and friends. Give yourself time to adjust. You know, everybody, everybody's world moved 360 degrees because of this pandemic. And it's a chronic thing. It is lasting longer than expected. It's not, you know, one after two months, everything's fine. No, this has been going on for more than month uh, for more than one year. It's going to be on two years. OK, so. Don't be so hard on yourself. Everyone, don't be so hard on yourself. We need to adjust and we need to have time to bring in the changes, to understand the changes that's happening in our lives. So keep busy. Consider a pet. You know, sometimes interaction with humans is hard for a person who is depressed. So why not interact with pets? Exercise, get enough sleep, practice gratitude, seek help. And I know uh, later on we will be uh, giving you the numbers if you would want to talk. And then there's the relaxing rule. You have to be mindful of the present moment and you have to learn how to breathe. You know, not breathing at in, but you know, really breathing. And this is one of the things that WHO had been good enough to give us and we would like to share this with you. I hope you can see and hear this. Now we have once we have learned how to actually breathe, let's focus on the world.
So I will be uh, now going through like, let's just talk up some uh, about some few things that WHO also shared with us regarding stress and stress management. So uh, this is one of the materials that the WHO has given us to managing stress for people living in the Pacific Islands. If you have experienced this, you are not alone, definitely. So right now, there are many people in this community and all around the world who are also experiencing stress. Everyone experiences stress at some point in their lives, but we will help you learn practical skills for dealing with stress. Your journey throughout this booklet will teach your skills you need during time of stress. This guide is to help you manage. Stress means feeling overwhelmed or unable to cope. So let's go first to some of the causes of stress. You know, you have that because because of this pandemic, everybody is actually forced to be in the house most of the time. So there could be some family violence going on. Of course, like what Chani was saying, unable to provide for the family is definitely a stress um, point for most of the family of for most of the adults in the family. Of course, no school, sometimes, you know, you have to understand, no school sometimes is quite the opposite. Everybody's, yay, no school, etc. But if it's on a prolonged level, there is what we call as fatigue. There, there's a fatigue of always being at home, always having to find things to do because there's no interaction in going to school, okay? And then, of course, there's the possibility of sickness, or chronic sickness, which all uh, the family has already have, and then the family arguments that happen. And this time around, when the family arguments happen, everybody's present. Everybody knows about it. Unlike before, that it could be kept a secret. Now, it's all in the open. And then, and there's of course, what will happen? And that I think what that's one of the things. One of the things that is present probably in all of our minds because of this COVID when would the COVID end? What will happen after this pandemic? And there's a lot of people that are already displaced because of this. How does stress affect the, the body? Okay. So there are lots of videos about how the stress affect the body, but let's make it very simple. Many people get unpleasant feelings because they are stressed out. Like for example, headaches, um, not feeling hungry, sometimes feeling too hungry. Sometimes there's neck, especially the neck, neck pains, shoulder pains, lump in the throat, heavy chest, back pains, upset stomachs. Uh, other people would have tight muscles. Other people find their body get sick with sick rashes. And sometimes that, that that's, uh, this happens. Sometimes there would be some rashes, there would be some irritation, and they don't know what's happening. And it all could be because of stress. Most of the time I would be seeing in the clinics stomach upsets, okay? They would be questioning, ah, I didn't eat anything. I don't know if it's food poisoning or anything and turns out it's stress. And sometimes, of course, when they are very depressed or they are very stressed out, they cannot focus. They would say they have problems with their memory. They cannot be still. They would be agitated, pacing the floor. They would get angry easily. Sometimes they would be crying for no apparent reason. They just <gasps> and just cry. Sometimes they would be feeling sad and then sometimes they would be feeling guilty because they feel that they're doing something. They don't know what they're doing. Are, uh, am I supposed to be doing something? Am I supposed to be feeling something? I don't know what I'm feeling. Okay, so these are symptoms of stress. And of course, the worry and having difficulty of sleep. Uh, is always present or again like I said changes in your appetite either you eat too much or you don't eat at all the food doesn't taste good okay there are four ways to manage stress and we did talk about or we did I did show you about the WHO um, material about breathing so focus on your breathing give it your full attention notice the air as it flows in and out of your nostrils Notice the gentle movement of your shoulders. Notice how your chest moves in and out 
notice how your belly moves in and out. So when you say deep abdominal breathing, it's actually your belly that goes in and out. Okay, so repeat this three times and notice how you feel. You have to understand, this is not something that can easily be done. You have to practice it because usually once we are stressed out, once we are, you know, thinking of things, depressed, etc., what we usually would be doing is uh, rapid breathing, fast breathing. You have to learn to teach yourself how to do exact opposite, slow abdominal breathing, slow and then and then very slowly put the breath out. And then we did, I did share to you another video that WHO gave us that is focused on the world around us. Slow your breathing, empty your lungs completely, then let them refill as slowly as possible and take three slow breaths. Slowly press your feet on the floor. So you have to be present in the present. That's what this video is about. And then slowly stre uh, stretch your arms and slowly press your hands together. And then focus on the world. Notice where you are and what you are doing. So usually it's give five things that you can see. Give four things that you can hear. Give three things that you can smell. Give two things that you can touch. And usually we ended it with give one thing that you can taste. Live by your values because you do have values, you do have your own set of rules. For example, some kind of friends or family members want you to be um, this, but you feel that, oh no, I have to do this because I think this is the right thing to do. Values are your deepest desires for your sort of person that you want to be. So loving, wise, and patient, committed, reliable, calm, responsible, caring, protective, and you have to encourage yourself. Value describes the sort of person you want to be, how you want to be treated by others and the world around you. So this is the time, you know, because of this COVID, etc. This is the time to reevaluate yourself. What do you think your values are? What do you think is important for you? What is your purpose in life? To help you clarify your values, here's a list. These are not the right values or the best ones, but they are simply some common ones that we would always see. So it's up to you if you feel that this is this is what you also want. For example, support your choice to be kind to your child. Then a small step might be to play or read to your child for 10 minutes or day. Be kind, be caring, be generous, be supportive, be helpful, be brave, be persistent, be forgiving, be grateful, be patient, be responsible, be protective, be disciplined, be hardworking, be committed, be loyal, be honorable, be respectful, be fair and just, and so on. Or support your choice to be grateful and respectful. Then a small step might be to greet someone you care about warmly and experience gratitude. So these are some of the things that you can do. Select three or four of those values that seem more important to you and write them in here. And then choose a value and think of one thing you can do to live towards that value, for example, today. And then you can choose another value tomorrow. And being kind would always help others. Always help yourself. It will be uplifting to you. And you will not be thinking about, oh, I'm so stressed. But rather, you would have this warm feeling that, oh, I've been kind, I've shown kindness today. Be kind to others and yourself. You help, uh, can help and feel you and make yourself be better. Everyone needs a friend. Everyone needs kindness. We can be kind to ourselves too, you know, and say, oh, 
I shouldn't be uh, uh, eating this because it's too fattening, etc. Or in you haven't been eating very good for the whole three days, etc. Then if you really want to eat that, you can eat that for today. Reward yourself because you are not that stressed today. And if you are kind to yourself, you would have more energy and motivation to be kind to others. So everybody benefits from that. So think of one thing you can do today to be kind to yourself or others. For example, do something you enjoy, like cook dinner for your family and friends. Or say a kind word to yourself or someone else. You don't have to, it doesn't have to be that elaborate. Remember, even the tiniest actions matter. A giant tree grows from a tiny seed. And even in the hardest or most stressful of times, you can take small actions to live by your own values. If you now go to... I will end this with, uh, again, a poster from... Um, WHO regarding mental health. And coping with stress during COVID-19 pandemic. Definitely, uh, we do agree that uh, it is normal to feel fearful or anxious about these times. It is trying times. Be kind to yourself and look after your well-being. Stay connected with people you love and talk about your feelings. If physical distancing regulates, then sometimes using phone, internet, or staying in contact. And sometimes, for example, you can be kind and show your kindness by teaching old people or teaching senior citizens about, you know, the beauty of the internet, Facebook, uh, Messenger, Skype, all of those things. Okay, they don't, they don't really have to learn Instagram or anything, just the normal conversations that they would be able to talk to family members from abroad, okay? Look after your body and get enough rest, eat healthy foods, be physically active, and minimize use of alcohol or other substances. A lot of things happen when you are stressed out, and sometimes you are focusing on, I have to do this, I have to work for this, etc. But you have to first focus on yourself, because nobody could really be helping, helping yourself but yourself. And for you to be able to, like for example, you want to help others, etc., how about focusing first on yourself? Help yourself so that you'll be able to help others. Do an activity you enjoy or find meaningful every day, such as, for example, cooking. Some people find praying or dancing or singing. Okay. Stay up to date with accurate information about COVID-19 pandemic in your community and take breaks from COVID-19 related media if you feel overwhelmed. This is quite important because we are bombarded by all bad news not just about covid but all bad news everywhere if you go for all <coughs> cnn <coughs> and any other uh, news channels it's all gunshot wounds it's all hurricanes it's all cyclone it's all pandemic the delta variant the lambda variant everything if you feel that that's so overwhelming already then stop take a break from that okay nobody's gonna fault you that you don't know the latest statistics Remember, you have to focus on yourself. And being focused on yourself would mean that you'd be able to help others. Don't use smoking, alcohol, or other drugs to manage your emotions. They might seem to help in the short term, but you can make things worse. It can, there's a lot of, I mean, addiction is definitely one other topic, but you don't use that as a temporary fix, especially if you're stressed out, especially if you're depressed. Go to the root problem of depression. Go to the root problem of stress. And if you feel that you cannot handle it by yourself, reach out because there's always help. Children may respond to stress in different ways. Listen to your child's concern and give them extra love and attention. <laughs> Keep the regular routines and schedules, including time for learning, playing, and relaxation. Again, like we said, the child's brain is different. It's remodeling itself. It's uh, still developing, restructuring. So if you find yourself in a position to help out, help out the youth. And if you're the youth, remember, you have that position. You, have, you are empowered to change and to make 
the brain, the structure of their brain, remember neuroplasticity, you have the means to make it a better one. And if you have, and if you can find a purpose in your life, then definitely you would be a better version of you. You would have compassion and you would be able to go back to uh, helping not just yourself, but others. So, Chane, going back to you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Maria. Um, now I'd just like to share the last part of the presentation. Uh, sorry. Right. Okay. Uh, I'll, uh, sorry, Altab, if you could just share my presentation again, I think I've probably messed this up. Mm. Yeah, you can, uh, you can just uh, stop presenting and I'll okay. share it from my end. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Right, while we're just waiting for the presentations, thank you so much for filling in the survey. We've had uh, a lot of uh, entries and we're really thankful for everybody that has uh, taken their time out to complete the survey. Uh, do I just take control? Huh? Shana, just uh, before you begin, um, yes. something I would uh, try to pick on, which uh, uh, which actually Altab has uh, said in the beginning, is that we will be doing uh, a set of draws, right? Right. Um, so how that would work is, um, it's basically they, there's no correct answer to these questions, but it's simply just for participation. And then in the end, what we'll do is we'll take all of your results, um, and then we will do a random pick, and three lucky uh, attendees will actually get uh, recharge cards. So I, I've actually picked this up from, uh, uh, Dr. Maria's uh, presentation. So she said that there are three questions uh, that actually uh, uh, help you notice what you're doing, right? So what is uh, this one that is, what are four or five things you can see? What are two or three things you can hear? And what are two or three things you can smell? So if you can put like uh, for all the attendees, if you can put in the chat, uh, at least two to three things that you can see, uh, two to three things that you can hear, and two to three things that you can smell along with your email address. And uh, I think uh, after the webinar, we will be announcing the winners on Instagram. Thank you. Set on it. Right. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I hope uh, so. Dr. Maria really touched a lot about. Uh, uh, the aspects of the human brain uh, as a teenager, you know, understanding uh, what purpose is and understanding uh, coping strategies that could help you through uh, the difficult times that you face as a youth. Eh? Now, uh, just to end, uh, I would just like to talk a bit about your role as youth eh? in in this uh, whole this whole development that we are having on trying to trying to change the face of mental health and trying to establish healthier uh, ways of uh, of uh, dealing with mental health as a community. Yeah? Now you might ask yourself, um, how can you help eh, as, a, as a youth? Now to be honest, right now everybody in this chat, eh, everybody that is tuned in right now, everybody that is logged in through the chats, everybody that's following this seminar, this is the very start of contributing towards changing the understanding of mental health. Eh? Right now, just having open discussions, being educated about it, being able to understand the certain parts of uh, mental health that uh, we, we, we wouldn't have really understood before, this is all parts of changing the conversations. Eh? Now, if, I, if we are being really honest, you know, how many people here in the chat growing up, eh? growing up as children, growing up in your individual homes, you know, how many people here actually had conversations about mental health with your family? Eh? 
Did you have these sorts of conversations? Was was it really even something that we talked about? Eh? So, you know, it's a, it's very important to understand that, you know, uh, in order to change the perceptions of mental health, we will need to start making, having proper conversations about it, especially in the grassroots area. And with the, uh, with uh, in the uh, in our individual homes, this generation, everybody logged in right now. Everybody logged in. All the youths logged in right now. You will be the benefactors of change. You know, you will be the ones that start to uh, have the norms and start to practice the 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 right ways of dealing and uh, and of viewing uh, mental health issues. Eh? Now. Just, uh, just, a, just, a, just, a, just, I just like everyone just to picture. Eh? Now, imagine if we lived, you know, in a community where if we saw someone who was, uh, you know, we, we just by viewing them, we would understand that okay, this is not someone that is well in tune with himself. He doesn't have the best sort of thinking. You know, this there is clearly something that this person is going through. You know, imagine if a community had that understanding. You know, we had the understanding to point out that okay, this person is someone that needs help. You know, this is uh, this is someone that is going through something. This is someone that might have some form of a mental health illness or mental health disorder. You know, that is uh, that is the types of discussions that we are supposed to be having as youths. Eh? And today, I'd like I'm very thankful that uh, you know. Uh, we are having these discussions and we are all becoming ambassadors for wellness and promoting good mental health practices in our own ways. So imagine if we are in these communities and uh, instead of saying, you know, these very derogatory common terms, like these very negative terms when we view someone who is struggling with a mental health illness, so we have these derogatory terms, these mental, this, uh, these very negative terms like like off or that person is a snap, you know, all these very negative terms, instead of people saying that and using that as the language of describing that, we should be, we as youth should start to cultivate the norm of trying to understand better, understand more that, okay, these people are people that, you know, they didn't choose to be this way. They didn't choose to, to be suffering from a mental health illness. They didn't choose to be, you know, victims of stress. They are just victims of... Uh, of the circumstances that they are in, eh? so I thank uh, Chanel and everyone for 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 establishing this group chat and for being uh, being facilitators of education and of change as well. Eh? To be able, that's what we should be doing as as youths right now to educate each other, having talks like this, having more talks like this, so that we have uh, we change the discussion as a whole. Eh? So uh, just a challenge. Now we should, as youths, we should be the generation that makes it a norm to reach out. Reach out, put your hand out there, help, and always be looking for all of these people or always be looking for each other's silent struggles. You know, the smiling depression, all these things. If we have, uh, if we cultivate this as youths and we start to practice it every day and we start to make it a norm, this will only make it better for our future generations. And it all begins here. Eh? So just in saying that, uh, I'd like to end uh, today's uh, very spirited uh, presentations and like to thank you all for your time. Uh, we do have some helpful resources here. Hopefully we'll, uh, we'll uh, send the, this, uh, these PowerPoints to Chanel and he can distribute it if possible. And uh, we also will be giving away our, our contacts as well. Eh? But just for crisis reasons, there is, uh, if you are going through someone, if you're logged in right now, and if you're going through something, there is the National Suicide Prevention uh, Helpline. You can call 1543, there's the Domestic Violence Helpline, 1560, Empower Pacific, or you could contact us directly. We will be putting our emails in uh, our emails and our contacts down as well if you are interested in, uh, in hearing more about mental health. So once again, uh, thank you very much. And on behalf of Dr. Maria and I, I'd like to take this time to thank, uh, thank uh, Chanel and the team and for all the listeners out there for helping, for allowing us to be able to share today. Uh, so we hope that you, uh, there's something that you can take away. Uh, thank you.